This low silica lava flow was for the longest time thought to be part of the Jared Basalt which filled the vast majority of the island park caldera bottom 189,000 years ago. So, why is the confirmation that a basalt lava flow erupted 35,000 years ago so important? Well, it tells us about the state of Yellowstone's underlying massive magma chamber and magma reservoir in the long term. Yellowstone's magmatic plumbing underground primarily consists of lower silica basaltic magma, extending from the base of the crust at 40 km or 24.9 miles depth to around 15 km depth. Rhyolite only exists above it in sections, between 4 and 15 km depth, but despite what this diagram seemingly shows, it is not a 100% continuous mass of material. If this deeper basaltic magma was to sufficiently rise where rhyolitic magma did not exist above it, it would have the potential to erupt onto the surface and form an Icelandic to Strombolian-style fissure or cinder cone forming eruption. This is post-caldera eruptions why since Yellowstone's most recent major caldera forming eruption 631,300 years ago, 81 separate eruptions have occurred. Inside the caldera, this involved 27 rhyolite lava flows, while outside the caldera it involved 13 rhyolite lava flows, although almost all of these occurred close to the caldera rim. On the other hand, the other 41 eruptions all involving basaltic lava occurred outside of the caldera, but it was thought that the last of these had occurred 120,000 years ago. Thus, if we think of a differing origin for two eruption types, one rhyolitic inside of Yellowstone's caldera, and one basaltic outside of its caldera, the revelation of a much more recent basaltic eruption becomes more interesting. You see, no matter how many times you poke Yellowstone with a stick, asking it to do something, or how many tabloids claim a super eruption is imminent, a rhyolitic eruption inside its youngest major caldera simply won't occur anytime soon. Its Yellowstone melt rhyolitic magma chamber is at most only 28% melt, and you need at least 35-50% to melt to create the minimum potential for a volcanic eruption to happen. However, the status of its deeper basaltic magma reservoir is less clear, meaning that while unlikely, there exists a very very low but non-zero potential at least in my opinion of a basaltic eruption occurring outside anywhere from 4 to 40 miles outside of Yellowstone's caldera in the next 25,000 years. However, this new study also offers a potential argument against the claim I just made, via the following information. On occasion, basaltic magma rises to shallower depths, heating rhyolitic magma, keeping it at rhyolite, basalt interaction a high temperature. Per a direct quote from the U.S. Geological Survey, periods of volcanic unrest at Yellowstone are characterized by an increase in activity in the lower, basaltic portion of the magmatic system that provides the heat necessary to spur the shallow, rhyolitic portion of the magmatic system into growing and or erupting. These periods of increased activity in the lower portion of the magmatic system are manifested on the surface as periods where numerous basaltic magmas erupt outside the caldera, while rhyolites, which are less dense, block the basalt from rising where a rhyolite magma chamber is present, namely in the area of Yellowstone caldera, but may erupt themselves. This explains why Yellowstone caldera is characterized by numerous episodes of rhyolite lava flow activity that correlate in time with basaltic activity outside the caldera. In other words, you might expect basaltic eruptions outside of Yellowstone's caldera to occur around the same time as rhyolitic eruptions inside its caldera. And yet, Yellowstone seemingly shows no signs of any recent or active shallow basaltic intrusions, so an eruption may also not be likely outside of its caldera for many many thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of years. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.